kidney cancer is the commonest cancer in India and almost one in three can cancer patients that are diagnosed in India suffer from kidney cancer. Almost 30 to 35 percent of our patients are kidney cancers and the commonest kidney cancer that we see in India is a oral cancer thanks to the tobacco chewing habit of our cancer patients. And even those oral cancer patients that are diagnosed in India versus those who are seen in the western world are different cancers. In the west, the oral cancers that are seen are mainly the tongue and the floor of mouth oral cancers which are mainly the alcohol induced oral cancers as opposed to that what we see in India are classically described as Indian oral cancers that are of buccal mucosa, ginger buccal complex cancers, the alveolus cancers and the retromolar trigone cancers and therefore the name is given as Indian oral cancer. Now when we see that majority of the patients that are coming to me today are most of the times have come to you all, you are the primary physicians who are diagnosing these patients and we are finally the ones who are treating these patients. So it is essential for you to know what happens to these patients, how do we investigate these patients, how do we diagnose these patients, how do we finally treat these patients. So what happens to these patients? When we investigate these patients, what is our aim and objective of investigating these patients? We don't have to ask for investigation. What is the aim of investigation? Aim of investigations are threefold aim of investigation. Number one is that yes, we want to confirm that whatever we are clinically suspecting it to be cancer, we want to confirm that it's a cancer. Number two is that we want to know the extent of the cancer, how far it has extended, it is extending, and how far it has gone deep, how far it has gone into the lymph node. And third, we want to plan the treatment after confirming the malignancy. And this is to do all these things, we do investigation. Plain and simple, to confirm the diagnosis, we need a tissue diagnosis. And this is done by just a plain simple punch biopsy, which you yourself can do it in your outpatient clinic by taking either in a, under topical anesthesia or by giving a local anesthesia. To see the local regional extent of the disease, we require some kind of an imaging and what imaging you should ask for, I'll go in little bit of a detail afterwards. Do we need to do any kind of a metastatic workup? Like for other cancers, we ask for sonographies of the abdomen, we ask for CT scan, we ask for PET scan, should we ask for all those investigations? In oral cancer, is a disease which remains localized, it's what we call the local regional malignancy. It has no tendency to spread to liver, lung, brain, bone, so it has no metastatic potential or a very low metastatic potential when it is diagnosed as a poor prime of disease. The situation changes when it recurs. So as a poor prime of oral cancer, there is no role of metastatic workup. As I told you, for a tissue diagnosis, plain simple biopsy. Will you also do an FNAC? The patient has a malignancy in the oral cavity and a patient has a lymph node in the neck. Will you also do FNAC? No need of doing FNAC. Any patient has a oral cancer, also has a lymph node, it is always considered to be a positive lymph node unless proven otherwise. So don't have to do FNAC unless and until you cannot reach a kind of a, a tumor for a biopsy, then only you will do FNAC to, do, to prove the, the diagnosis. That situation arises very rarely, you don't have to do FNAC. Next we come, as I told you, first is to prove the malignancy. So you have taken a biopsy, you have proven that yes, it is a malignancy. I would say 95% of the time, it turns out to be a squamous carcinoma. Only 2 to 5% of the cases, it will turn out to be some rare malignancy like adenoid cystic carcinoma or other minor salivary gland tumors, adenocarcinoma. Most of the time, it will turn out to be a squamous carcinoma. What next? You want to do some kind of an imaging. Which imaging will you ask for? And for that you must understand why are you doing imaging. You are doing if you give imaging to find out whether the disease is operable or inoperable. That is your first because surgery is a primary modality for oral cancer. You must understand that the disease becomes inoperable by its superior extent going into the intratemporal fossa or going
going above the zygoma or it becomes inoperable by going downwards below the hyoid into the infrahyoid musculature of the tongue. So that's how or it goes into the lymph nodes and lymph nodes get fixed onto the carotid system. So these are kind of signs of inoperability. <coughs> Extensive soft tissue or up to the zygoma, hyoid and infrahyoid structures, fixed nodes, upward extension into the infratemporal fossa. So these are the things which you want, it's very easy to remember, above, above the zygoma, infratemporal fossa, below, below the hyoid and fix it to the lymph node. These are the structures you want to see. So this is one reason why you want to do imaging. Once you know that it is operable, the next question that, is, that comes to your mind is, yes it is operable, but what is the extent of the disease? And why it is important to know the extent of the disease? Because you want to know what all structures to be removed and what all structures can be preserved. Because there are important structures that have to be preserved which will give a good cosmesis, which will have, which have a functional implication. So we want to know whether the mandible is involved by the disease or not, whether the lymph nodes are being involved or not, and what is the exact extent of the disease that you need to remove. And for these reasons you will do imaging. So what all those kind of, this is a classical, like, this was an imaging which was done about 20, 30 years back. The moment we saw oral malignancy, the imaging that was asked for was OPG. Now today, most of the oncologists will say that we don't ask for OPG for any oral malignancy. Why do we say that? What are we looking at? We want to see whether the bone is involved or not involved. For a OPG to detect the bony erosion, at least 30% of demineralization has to take place. Till that time, it will be too late. So for bone involvement also, OPG is not a good <coughs> investigation. Number two, it's not going to give me any information on soft tissues. It's not going to give me any information on lymph nodes. It's not going to give me any information if the disease is coming anteriorly and it's going to get superimposed on the vertebral column. CT scan, which is why OPG was previously done, because CT was not routinely available. And therefore, in today's day and age, if you see a clear-cut biopsy through a malignancy, I would recommend, I think, OPG is not going to give us any added information, directly go for a CT scan, which has become in today's day and age an investigation of choice, which will give, give you information on bone, it will give you information on signs of inoperability, whether it has gone higher upwards into, into the infratemporal fossa, it will give you information downwards into, below the hyoid, it will give you information on the lymph nodes, and you can also do very good 3D reconstruction. Here you can see upward extension into this is a normal infratemporal fossa fat you can see and here the, you can see a disease extending into the infratemporal fossa which is a sign of inoperability. Same thing seen on a coronal view uh, on a axial view over here. Similarly you can do a 3D reconstruction and then you know exactly where to take the cuts and that will also help the plastic surgeon to plan his reconstruction. There is a beta scanner. You people are more aware of these softwares because uh, these were developed for your field. Then we started using it, but also help us in taking exact kind of resection cuts where to take cuts for resectional margins of tumor. When will you do MRI? So routinely for oral cancer, buccal mucosa malignancy, gingival buccal complex malignancy, valvulus malignancy, RMP malignancies, they are my primary intention is to know the bony involvement, intratemporal fossa, lymph nodes, I will get a CT scan done, plain and simple, easy to available, gives me adequate information in more than 90% of the cases. When will I ask for MRI? MRI is good for soft tissue delineation, when the muscles, I want to know which muscle, how deep it has gone, which muscles are involved and that information I want in tongue malignancy. Tongue and floor of mouth malignancy. So he's, this is the situation. This is a tongue malignancy which I showed you. Here is a tongue malignancy where I can see that it has gone down deep into the myelohyoid muscle, intrinsic muscles of tongue. It has gone almost up to the submandibular gland. This on a CT scan to differentiate each and every muscle becomes difficult. 
So if tongue and chloroform malignancy, MRI is better than CT scan. So plain and simple, gingival buccal complex, alveolus malignancy, where bone is more, you are more interested in bone, ask for a CT scan, tongue, chloroform, mouth cancer, ask for MRI. When will you ask for ultrasonography of neck? Ultrasonography you will ask when you are dealing with early oral cancers, when you clinically cannot feel any lymph nodes. Now clinical assessment accuracy is only a fifteen of around 70%. How much ever good? You may have a 50 years experience in palpating neck, but still your clinical accuracy is around 70%. You add a good sonography to it, the accuracy goes up to 90%. You add a sonography guided FNAC to it, that if there is any suspicious node, you do FNAC of that, that accuracy goes to 95%. So this is an indication of doing a USG net. So early tongue cancer, early buccal mucosa cancer, you will do a sonography of the neck. What is the role of PET CT scan? Today's investigation is PET CT scan. Everybody wants to do PET CT scan. Early cancer comes to you. Will you do a PET CT scan? There is no role of doing a PET CT scan in at, I'm telling you at diagnosis of oral cancer. I'm not saying at recurrent oral cancer. So this is why have we done a PET CT scan over here? Because this is not a type per primum case. You can see already a flap being put and this patient came on a follow-up and complaining of pain. We didn't know what was the cause of his pain. We got a PET CT scan done. Clinically there was nothing, but behind the flap we could find that there was a nodule over here, which we otherwise we could have based on a routine CT scan or routine MRI. So this is an indication to get a PET CT scanner to detect a recurrence in an operated case. But a per primum case, please don't get PET CT scanner, not required at all. Sir, what is a PET CT scan? Pardon? What is a PET CT scan? PET CT scan is a scan which is a combination of anatomical imaging, that is a CT scan, and a PET is a FTG that is a type of a glucose which is given in the uh, uh, through the bloodstream which gets concentrated in, in all the tissues which have high metabolism. Now cancer has a high metabolism. Okay, there are other tissues also. Some even uh, infection also has a high metabolism. But any tissue which has a very high metabolism, it will get concentrated. So it's a functional imaging. So it is CT is a structural imaging. PET is a functional imaging. They are combining the two. So it's like uh, combining a structural imaging with a functional imaging. <coughs> what happens? They say it's a very accurate to detect metastasis. In an early tongue cancer, you will detect metastasis, get it done, uh, this thing. So these are market driven forces which are there. It, it doesn't add to anything. Please don't, don't get it done in early cancers of anything. Not only tongue, whichever cancer does not have. No head neck cancer. I would not comment on other cancers, though I am a surgical oncologist. Head neck cancer, no. Certain situations, you will do all the investigations, but finally what helps is a good examination under anesthesia. Because a patient has certain severely painful lesions and some extra information you will always get it when you put a patient under short general anesthesia, you put your finger in his throat, feel the lesion properly, or a patient are borderline resectable patient, finally imaging are very good quality photographs what finally you see on the table or with your fingers inside with your own eyes is different than what you see on the image. Okay. So in some situations examination of the anesthesia in the borderline resectable cases is what helps you. In all other situations, in all other diseases, after investigation you directly go for treatment. Malignancy is only situation where there is a step in between where after investigation there is a step that you stage the disease and then you go for treatment. And this staging is a standardized staging all over the world which is called as a TNM staging. Now, don't need to bug the staging because it keeps on changing every now and then. So this is TNM staging which is T1, T2, T3, T4 and then there is a According to T1, T3, uh, the stage 1, 2, 3, 4, the malignancy is divided into. Why do we 